Hello everybody, welcome back to another video on the channel and in today's video I want to talk about PvE strategies in Wizard 101 within PvP. Now you've probably heard this term going around for quite some time and the terminology has kind of shifted from time to time and I want to talk about why it is currently not good for the game and why it hasn't been good for the game in the past. I am not talking about actual PvE content in this video so don't get all but hurt about that. I'm talking about PvE strategies simply in PvP. I am someone who has personally gotten my ass kicked by PvE strats all of 5th age and I went against them every now and then depends on the matchup of course and I've also done them quite a bit as of recently because Storm is obviously the worst school. If you don't PvE you lose every game and Fire if you PvE and Trap Stack and Blade Stack it just makes your life way easier and simple to do. Do I like doing them? Do I think they're fun? No absolutely not but let's talk about what they are and why they're so good right now in the meta. I will not be talking about recruit games. I am simply talking about the highest level of play. Okay, so what is a PvE strat? Now, this has changed from time to time. At the start of 5th age, it was basically just spamming the same move, like trap, 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 blade, 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 uh, threefold, 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 right, etc. But now, PvE strats have kind of moved away from that and incorporating a lot of things together. So like traps, blades, and weaknesses. So PvE now is just simply getting a couple of buffs and threatening a colossal amount of damage. And it's always best on the schools that can hit around debuffs like fire and like myth. Myth has been broken for so long because it can buff and nobody can stop them. And if you try to mitigate the damage with a weakness or a shield, they just click minnow or shield counter or a stone and you lose. But the issue is if you don't shield or debuff a myth, they just take a pigs or a base hit and then you fall over and die practically. So over time, this PBE meta we have now is simply just other schools like Storm copying what myth does. Myth obviously does what Storm does better because of their spot on their Shambo, but there is a unique gimmick that Storm has, and that's the fact of the matter that they can actually preserve their buffs while doing off-school Myth stuff and creating more. So for example, I can Stormblade and then Minotaur to break a weakness or whatever, and then actually buff up my Storm hits while not sacrificing my Stormblade. If we look at a card like Immolate, for example, that's not good because it actually gives up your school's buffs, for example. So the whole PvE meta we have now is simply just other schools copying Myth because of how oppressive Myth has been, right? You can't play regular against a Myth because they will always win because of their spot on or Shambo. They can always outtrade you with their stats and their better library, uh, i.e. Drop Bear Furry. Uh, Ninja Pigs, Minotaur, Stone Colossus. So if we take a school like Storm, for example, right, where if you try to play regular and you get a myth, you simply cannot win. It is quite physically impossible to win unless the myth is really bad at the rank and like below probably like mid ranks, like 1700. So it's just impossible to win. So, what do you have to do on a storm to beat a myth? Well, you have to PvE stack back. And now with TC actually fixed, I would argue storm honestly has the advantage in that matchup. The only issue with that matchup specifically is the fact of the matter that myth is still a better blade school than storm or any of the blade schools, but that's a whole separate problem for PvE in general. So PvE strats simply are just buff stacking and going for a big shot with a select few buffs. Now you're probably like, okay, well, if you're buff stacking, that means there's stuff on the field that the opponent can counter them, right? Now, it's funny that you ask this, right? Single blades and single traps will always give you like a net gain and net positive in tempo. And there's not many good counters to these things, right? When you add try things into, you know, the mix, like try blade and stuff like that, the counters obviously get a bit better, but then you run into an issue where the only schools that can actually beat the current PvE strats present day are the schools that aren't actually good against blades and traps. So for example, right, if every storm is doing PvE, right, you're gonna storm trap because it's just a good move, right? However, a life can centaur that single trap off and get a crap ton of value because the damage on the card that only life can do and the 40 blade is extremely potent that only life can do. The same thing is for Skeletal Dragon, right? A Skeletal Dragon does like 4,000 to a storm without a buff, takes off the blade, and then they're gigabuffed. 
no other school can do that if they try to dual school. They're not going to do anywhere near that amount of damage, and it's not going to be scary. And the utility they get back, like the useless blade they don't even want to use, is just not worth it for anything. And a common argument the devs want to make is like, okay, well, why don't you just gambit that blade? There's two issues with that. Blade gambits or whatever are just not good in general. Also, you would much rather just have a blade for your school. Also, there's just no good blade cards in general to like leverage a blade or two with. And another issue with this is the fact of the matter that PvE strats typically only do like a single trap, a single blade, and a single aura. And generally, the counters to these aren't amazing, right? It's only if you get a counter matchup, like an ice that can wyvern or a life that can centaur. And the devs can't make the argument that people can dual school because it is simply not supported, right? If an unbuffed dragon is doing 4k to me on a storm, and then I tried to use dragon on a storm, it's probably going to do like 1200 damage. Even though I have like 3000 less health than a death, it's just incredibly dumb. So at that point, it is simply not worth doing because I'm spending way more pips. I can't even use that death blade. And they're simply just gonna spend their eight pips back on mono school. That's actually gonna do way more damage and outpace me and get further ahead. This is why dual schooling doesn't work. Now let's talk about a reason why people are doing the PVE strats in the first place. PVE strats are really good because they are extremely, extremely efficient. Also, on some schools like Storm, where their regular base play of trading hits back and forth with like a caddy, a catch, uh, a clanker maybe, is just somehow not that good, probably due to their stats if I had to guess. And while I was thinking of recording this video, I think a simple solution to fixing PBE strats is simply just to ban the TC tri effects. Like, you know, TC tri blade, TC tri trap, uh, you know, fuel, threefold inside right? That would actually make things much more counterable and much more reasonable. The PvE player always has a way easier job than the regular player because the regular player has to cycle counters and, you know, buff and keep up with the pacing effectively. PvE storm right now is essentially the only thing the school has keeping it together along with the new owl you got, right? And even with PvE Storm, if, if you get a good player on one of the counter schools, so that's like a life, maybe a fire that spams sets as well as like a trap counter, uh, you know, an ice, a death, you're just going to lose on a storm. But if they're not a good player or a mid player and you're a good storm player, you will beat those. But the highest level of play, it comes down to the little things like dual school not being supported. And then uh, the mono school counters like ice and death against blades, for example, they can nuke you and actually use those utilities to leverage and nuke you more. Other schools can't do that because the effect always isn't chromatic and the damage does way less regardless of you having thousands less, thousands less health and thousands less resist stat, whatever. So yeah, PvE is simply just way more efficient and I think a simple solution is just banning the try stuff or maybe just TC buffs in general. I think banning TC stuff in general would really slow down the pacing quite a bit and help with stacking. That along with dual schooling not being supported for the reasons I stated in the video at the highest level of play is just kind of what makes PvE really good and really dominant of a strat right now. So yeah, it's simply just the sideboard making the strat really efficient and easy to do. The counters aren't good unless you get a school that counters it, like the blaze and the traps, like life or ice or death, for example. Um, and then we obviously have dual school not being supported, so other schools can't dual school into ice, death, or life and get the same value as they do. And yeah, that is simply why PvE strats are broken in PvP. Again, I don't expect you guys to fully understand a lot of this if you don't play the game or don't play at the highest level of play. A lot of the stuff isn't going to make sense to you, or you might make up like what if scenarios and yada yada but then it always comes back to the same thing typically and that's kind of what makes a meta a meta i think a lot of this is caused simply because of how broken myth has been in the first place and how unplayable other schools are like storm has been for the past couple of years it really just encourages this kind of gameplay unfortunately and you know even as somebody who has an 80 percent win rate with the strat i don't really think it's fun i don't think it's healthy for the game but at the same time, if it's the meta, it's the meta. I either do it or I literally go back down to recruit. So it is what it is, man. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave your thoughts and feedback down there in the comments below. And I will see you on the next one. Thank you for watching and take care, guys.